everybody. I'm Afrin Khan, and today me and my colleague Dhanashri will be presenting on the topic Lusophone countries and their relation with India. So, what are the Lusophone countries? They are Portuguese-speaking countries across the world. In Africa, we have six countries, which are Angola, Cape Verde, Guinea-Bissau, Mozambique, Sao Tome and Principe. And finally, Equatorial Guinea. Apart from these African countries, uh, we have Portugal as well as Brazil that have Portuguese as their language. It makes these countries unique, right? A shared colonial trauma and a culture assimilated to the point of extincting the others. Still, the beauty lies in the ability of these countries to accept their past and bring out the best from their history, something that they share with India. In terms of culture, there is still a large number of influences in their architecture which consist of Portuguese churches and structures built in the traditional western style. A huge amount of literature in the Portuguese language talking about Africa which I find beautiful in terms of human adaptation. Authors like Jose Silva talk about the colonial tension between his country Cape Verde and his colonial master Portugal. Other aspects explored by these authors is the idea of alienation from their own cultural identity after being exposed to western ideologies or the desire to find common ground between their native people. In 1992, the five Lusophone African countries formed an interstate organization called PALOP of Law a colloquial acronym which translates to African countries of Portuguese official language. So these countries have also signed official agreements with Portugal, European Union and the United Nations and they work together to promote the development of culture and education along with the preservation of Portuguese language. However, Equatorial Guinea was also a Spanish colony. So Portuguese is the third official language. Dive into some interesting historical tidbits regarding their relationship with India. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about was the Siddhi community. They originally belonged to the Bantu tribe in Southeast Africa. And some of them were from the Lusophone country, Mozambique. Most of them migrated during medieval India era, but a number of them were brought in as slaves by the Portuguese. They were actually gifted as slaves by the Portuguese to the Nawab of Junagar. They have always been a part of many armies and are known for their strength and bravery, even though they are now a recognized community in India and enjoy the status of scheduled tribes in three states and one union territory. They still retain some of their African roots. The states that recognize them are Gujarat, Goa, Karnataka, and Daman and Dew. Among the residual cultural effects left by their African roots, a prominent example would be the famous Goma, which comes from the African word Nguma, which means drums, and the whole dance revolves around drums. So here we have a community joined and celebrating their dual roots of identity and bringing something unique to this world. Now, uh, another interesting historical event that I came across during my research was the freedom struggle of Goa and how it affected the citizens in Mozambique. Uh, but before that, let me give you a brief background. After India's freedom, the Asians in Mozambique had a choice. They could either take Indian or Pakistani citizenship. But for their Mozambique-born children, they could get Portuguese citizenship, which many of them did. Now, we all know that Goa was finally liberated from the Portuguese in 1961. What we don't know is what happened to the Indians in Mozambique during that time. All those who had registered as Indians were actually interned in concentration camps in Mozambique under the orders of the Portuguese dictator Salazar. Though they claim it was done to protect the Indians, 
the reality was that the portuguese were hoping to use these indians as a bargaining chip in exchange for the 3200 portuguese people captured in goa among other effects this spurred many of the muslims living in mozambique to pledge their allegiance to pakistan i found it very interesting so i added to the presentation uh now coming to the main topic in hand uh moving on to the foreign relations relations of these countries with india i will be talking about cape verde and guinea bissau now the first thing that i would like to comment on is that the relation between these countries except for mozambique is not very historically rich the cultural and languages language differences and even the historical differences don't help in forming good relations between the countries but now as these countries become more individual and embrace their identity they have started reaching out to india now with regards to cape verde india exports a number of drugs and pharmaceuticals cereals vehicle parts and electronic components to this country and it mainly imports iron and steel and other metal scrap like copper and aluminium from cape verde now bilateral development programs include supply of computers by india setting up of an it center by india and aid against fighting malaria dengue fever etc uh programs like desalination plant solar charging station have helped in the development of this country for uh and then there is this uh, program called itec it's called technical and economic cooperation program initiated by india and even under this program a number of cape verdeans have taken advantage and form under training loan from the country okay uh so then we have india and guinea bissau so guinea bissau has signed the isa framework agreement and was one of the 24 members which signed the declaration of yoga as a human treasure on the 11th session of intergovernmental committee for the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage uh india also has offered them the duty free tariff preference the dftp which is applicable for import of selected commodities from guinea bissau we show the economic confidence that india is extending towards this country cashews are main import indian imports while exports are iron steel rice construction material etc uh india supplies about 1000 ton of rice and emergency aid to guinea bissau and uh, india has extended much financial aid to this country in terms of food and agricultural sector and rural electrification projects uh so moving on we can see that where these steps are being taken are taking place but surely important in the future as both the countries are making efforts to reach out from here india has become third largest trading partner sharing about 10% of angola's external trade mainly on account of bulk crude oil purchases angola is the second largest source of crude oil for india after nigeria in the sub saharan africa the prominent indian organizations like reliance hpcl mumbai engineers india limited and metal investments have also been taking interest in angola Indian government also extended a line of credit help of 40 million US dollars to the government of Angola for CFM railway rehabilitation project to rail India technical and economic consultancy services. Credits were also extended by India for agricultural equipments and to construct a cotton spinning plant and an industrial park was also approved in 2010. Having supported the Angolan freedom struggle India also sent Indian made vaccines to Angola under the Vaccine Maitri initiative to help curb the crisis. Both the countries signed agreements for the promotion and protection of investments and creation of bilateral commission 
for cultural, technical, scientific and economic cooperation. In conclusion, we can say that countries like the African Lusophone countries may appear to be like David's compared to the Goliath-like state of India. But one can only imagine what the intellect of David and the might of Goliath can achieve if combined together. Hence, we can use our shared colonial past to overcome cultural and linguistic barriers and help in the development of the other nation. Apart from this, any contributions made by India towards these nations will only help in creating a better image of India and create goodwill in the continent of Africa.